afternoon, it's the 3rd of June 2020, we're still in lockdown. We've had some very hot weather, so it's cooler today and a little bit of rain, much needed. Um, this is going to be a short video um, with two purposes. One of them is to show you how to make a, a little experimental module consisting of a, a transistor and two or three other small components. Uh, in a prototype form very quickly by soldering it together on a piece of printed circuit board. Um, and the other purpose is that it can be an outreach from a previous video I did in which I made such a module but I glossed over how to make it and there may be some people that have seen that video that would like to uh, a bit more instruction on how to make little simple test modules so uh, this is it. I've got this sort of a bench so that the camera can come in and see what I'm uh, sort of messing around with. Um, okay, so this is, this is the module we made in the previous video. We'll give you a close-up of it. And it, it's, a, it's a single transistor phase inverter for, uh, for audio. And uh, it was used to help playback vertically cut gramophone records, disc records. Um, that's all in the other video. But we, we, we needed to make this, this circuit, so we'll just take a quick look at it. Take three. Here's the circuit, and uh, it doesn't really get much simpler than this. We've got a, um, an audio signal here, which goes up, down and up. Uh, comes in through a 10 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor into the base of this a transistor, a 2N3904, which is extremely cheap and common and a very ordinary uh, transistor. The base is biased by these two resistors. It's, it's The power can be anything between uh, 3 volts to 20 volts. We're using a PP3 battery, which is 9 volts, so that's fine. And uh, the signal comes out from the collector of this uh, transistor through another 10 microfarad electrolytic and goes off. Only by now, instead of going up, down, up, it's going down, up, down, which is what we want. The phase has been changed by 180 degrees. Here is the completed uh, module and you can see we've glued some strips of printed circuit board. One, two, three, four, five, six onto the board um, and here's our battery, we go the positive there, uh, the signal comes in through here, through this capacitor into the base of the transistor and out. And it looks ugly, um, but it works, uh, it works fine. And uh, the current drawn by it is negligible, it's less than half a milliamp. So uh, let's knock it up. Scene 11. So here are the three strips for the transistor. Here's where the positive comes in. And of course, everything else is negative. So any connection we make to this is, is all in common. That's one of the great conveniences of this system. So all we need now is another two pieces there, which are for the input to get into the base of the transistor and so on. So I'll just stick those two down as well. There we go. Now that's all ready. Um, but we don't start assembling it yet. Now before doing anything to the board and especially soldering on it, uh, there's two things about superglue. One of them is, is minor, which is that uh, the tubes often get gobbed up. But if you, when you finish using it, if you get a little tissue and uh, wipe it with some acetone, it's bearing in mind that nail varnish remover is largely acetone, um, so it's easy to get, um, and it will clean the nozzle and uh, so that tube you can usually get most of the stuff out before it gums up which they usually do. Well the other thing about super glue is much more important is that you mustn't solder onto it if you've just stuck it down as we have because a deleterious comp you know vapor is released and, it, and um, I, I've had my eyes have gone terribly bloodshot if I've worked on something complicated for a couple of days the next morning I, I, I was it was an aghast you know uh, and it was obviously the super glue. So um, having glued it down, put it, I'm going to put it in the airing cupboard, which is usually around 30 centigrade, uh, and leave it there till after lunch. So I'll see you later. Uh, here's the temperature controlled um, soldering iron, uh, 350 degrees centigrade it's set to, and uh, it's got a, a three millimeter uh, screwdriver flat bit on, which is actually rather corroded. We've got everything ready, so and um, 
we'll start with the transistor and you can see we've bent the bent the wire so that there are three that can go on these three pads and we know which way round the transistor goes because in one of its faces it's got a flat face on it which gives the orientation and so what we do is uh, put a blob of solder on each of these three um, pads there oh dear that one's come loose well I'll be damned I never put enough solder on it okay uh, well I'm going to break my own oath I've super glued this back and I am going to solder it before it's um, had time to dry then I shall put it, that on there okay and it's gone into that blob and then the, the other one will go into the middle blob and then this leg will go into that blob okay and, uh, uh, okay so now this is the point at which the signal comes in and we need a 10 microphone capacitor this is a recycled one it's got quite short leads and we have to make sure we get it the right way around this grey stripe means negative and the other side by implication is positive and the signal comes in on the positive side so we will put a blob of solder there and one on there which is the base of the transistor right and the positive and we'll do the, we'll, we'll do the negative one like so that's it dry and then move that wire over to there like that and put that down there and that is okay so that's our first capacitor in uh, now the next component along is a 180k resistor and here are the various resistors and things we've got we haven't actually got 180k uh, we've we've uh, run out of them uh, but what we have got is a is a um, 100k and also a little tiny one which is grey and red and orange which is 82k so if we put them together like that twist it up right and then put a bit of uh, solder on it solder it together can you see we've soldered it together uh, and then we, we, snip, we snip off the slipless wire like so uh, and that is now um, two resistors in series add up so that's a 180 uh, 182k but 2k they're, they're very low tolerance anyway so it's not going to uh, it's not going to make any difference and that goes from the voltage supply to the collector of the uh, sorry to the base which is the one in the middle which is why we made it longer okay so uh, we we're going to go from um, from this supply point to there and we can do it like this that goes there that goes that goes there and now it's cool we can stand it oops we can stand it up like that and so there is our 180k resistor in place and from the base down to deck there is 100k here is 100k and that's got to go from there to there so what I shall do is cut the leads off um, slightly long like that or slightly short actually <laughs> Um, okay, and then we can have a blob. We we'll use that same blob. I'm sorry, my hands in the way, but believe me. Sorry about that. There's the hundred k, and if we put it down over there and blob it like so, there it is. Fastened. Uh, down to earth good okay so um, ah yes now there is um, a resistor from the supply to the transistor 
the collector of the transistor which is a 5.6k resistor and um, here we are that's got uh, what's that blue uh, and uh, is it grey and blue and red anyway it is a 5.6k resistor and it's going to go there so I'm going to bend the wires round a bit to give us a bit of uh, room like so and snip them to snip them to length there we are so we can have a blob to there and a blob from the 9 volt bit and that can go in there and then we can bend it oopsie daisy that's come loose oh dear never mind we shall it, it, it will be held in place by those two resistors you see, that's all right it doesn't matter if it moves around a bit <laughs> and now we've got another um, 5.6k resistor which goes from the emitter to earth well that can go there right so I'll just cut that off like so we can put a blob of solder there and then put that there like that and then put that down to do that and there you are uh, now what's left? Um, boom, 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 boom. Nothing is left now except the output. So we haven't really finished it. And the output comes from the collector from here. Again, positive first. So I'm just going to bend the wires again and I shall cut them off. Quite long. Because we've got to jump across from there to there. Make sure we get... So we're going to put a blob on the end of here. I'm soldering back to front. <laughs> Make sure we've got positive the right way around. Onto there. And then just stretch him over a bit so that the negative comes to, to this here. And we can do that. And that is safely. We can just make sure they're all, all right. That one's loose, but that's it. That one, that, that's good. Uh, okay, so the wiring is nearly finished. All we need to do now is connect a screen lead to the here and to the deck and the input is from here to deck. So uh, then we, we'll try it out. Uh, this is a disc playing setup we have in our workroom. Um, there's an Edison Diamond disc on here which of course is vertically cut and there's a preamp here which is stereo. It's the stereo cartridge of course. And that feed comes out to this cable and there's a couple of couplers there that go down to another amplifier and the sound will come through these speakers. <laughs> and you hear the music's very jolly but there's a lot of noise accompanying it. So what we're going to do now is, here's our module that we made and what we're going to do is take one of these channels that's coming out and feed it into the module and the output from the module will go back in and now this left hand channel, because that's the left hand channel, it's now going to be 180 degrees out of phase. So now we play it again. And it sounds much, and it sounds much the same. Just putting the uh, one channel out of phase doesn't really uh, affect the sound much until you put it into mono. So I'm going to let it run for say ten seconds and then put it into mono.
Well, I'm sure you'll agree that there is a distinct improvement, all for the sake of one little tiny transistor. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found some of it of interest. And don't forget, there is a link. There's a link on this video description to the longer video. Uh, well, actually, this video has turned out quite long, uh, which has already gone up, which altogether deals with playing vertically cut records. And someone wrote in and said, why don't you put a few vertically cut records up online? So we may well do that. So in the meantime, thanks very much and take care. Bye now.